Hello Booktube. Surprise, surprise. Steve Donahue, our reading superhero, tagged me in another tag. And this one is the Finish the Book tag. And I would like to actually do this one because I get to show you a little bit of my... What's a nice word for insanity? We'll go with that one. Okay. So question number one says, do you keep a list of the books you've read? Well, I don't know. Should I show you? Well, I suppose the most obvious answer at this point is that, yes, I do keep a very detailed list of what I am um, reading or what I have read. Um, let's move on to question number two. It says, if you record stats, what stats do you record? Well, as we can see, I keep the title and the author, which is all very important and very logical. I keep gender. Um, I discovered the one year when I first started doing this that um, I read mostly males, and I was quite surprised at that, being female and all. And I then started to make a concerted effort in adding female authors to my reading. Um, it's something that has become more relevant in my purchasing as well of books although you know you get to cj sanson and then you start adding a lot or brandon sanson you know why do they have to be men <laughs> but um yeah so i've been adding more um, females to my list uh, my purchases but going back to my book survey so i have gender then i have diversity um the reason why i'm trying to keep tabs on this is that although I don't want my reading to feel like a chore, I want to read to further my own education. Let's put it that way. So I feel it's important that I am aware of how many books I'm reading by other um, ethnic groups. I don't feel that I should just be sticking to white. And um, I feel it will further me as a person, better me as a person. And... I should definitely try and make more of an effort. I have, in the last three years, made sure that at least 10% of my reading is not white. And I feel that that's still a very low amount, but it's better than it has been before I started making note of it. Um, the next one that I keep tabs on is country. Back then, when I first started doing this, I discovered that everybody I read was pretty much from either the UK or America and well the uk or the us so um i have now made pretty much a, um so this has made me very aware of trying to read more around the world genre is just a matter of interest for me um age group no longer really applies this year because i'm not trying to stock a, a library at school um this one made it easy for me to spot the books that i had read um so but i mean Maybe in a couple of years I'll end up working at a different school where I might need to stock a library again, in which case this will be a rather interesting um, statistic to keep tabs on. Book type is pretty much a waste of a column. I don't know why I keep tabs on it because it makes sense in my collective library, which you can see down here. I have all the books that I have. Um, this one here particularly is an exceptionally long one because I have a lot of books that are boxed, so I've got my unboxed books up here in this section. And um, uh, it's 782, and that's include, excluding my non-fiction because my non-fiction database kind of came to a sticky end when I had to go back to work um, when the year that I put this together. And I need to sort of haul them all out and actually do this again. So going back to my... I'm reading stats. So the book type makes sense for that. Um, the pages that I've read um, in the book, the year that it was first published, I'm not really interested in my edition here. Um, the star rating that I gave it, yes, I do keep star ratings. I'll talk about it in a bit. Um, where I bought the book, that one should probably be more interesting information in my main library. It is in my main library one as well. TBR, um, this one tells me which TBR pile it is. My book status, which it seems rather um, redundant until we get here where you can see I've got a reread and a DNF. Now the reread um, doesn't reduce the book from my um, overall TBR pile. And then series or standalone, that was just a matter of interest at one point in time. Then the date I started reading and the date I finished it. 
I also keep a list of what I have bought, the date that I've bought it, um, how much I've spent on them. <laughs> uh, that one always hurts. When I feel like going on a bit of um, retail therapy, this is generally the page to look at to go, that would be a very silly idea, girl. You've got enough books on your shelf. Um, I unhaul. I unhauled 50 books in my shelf massacre. Um, I'll see if I remember to link that down below. And then I sold two books that I had managed to get in better condition somewhere else, and I got some bucks back for them, so that was pretty nice, except I ended up just buying another book with that money. So, But hey, I got some money back, but I wasn't going to list all 50 books because, yeah, there's a bit of a financial summary. And then this page is pretty much the 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 maths that makes the charts. Um, it's not all that interesting, really. It's more interesting at the beginning of the year when I need to change dates. And then we get to the part that I enjoy. Um, January the 1st is always the most heartbreaking part where you go from having charts that look deliciously colorful to blank spaces. Um, so this year is just my genre and then genre by pages. So it tells me how much of what I'm reading because I mean some books are bigger than others. Author country, this one is rather short here for now. If you look at my categories, this is the um, categories that I'm using for my stats. And in the past, I used to have all of them in there. If we take a look at my 2017 one, you can see I had, these are the, all the countries that I have on my shelves. And, um, well, at least in 2017, I might have added more since. But it made my pie chart look a bit ridiculous because I'd have so many gaps where I hadn't read them. So... It, it made it more difficult to look at as well. So this year I've decided that I'm only going to add the country when I actually read a book from that country. It will make my pie chart a lot easier to handle. So that's the reason why this is extremely short at the moment. And I've left a lot of space for adding more. So with all the maths and, and formulas in already, so I don't have to redo any thinking. And it will just, that very bolded zero, because there's quite a few layers of zeros underneath that. Will then spread. Um, you can see I don't really read ebooks. I don't have an e-reader. Book length. I haven't been that lazy this year. Only two books under a hundred, but you can see I've been shying away from the tones. Um, book type. Pretty redundant, as I said. I don't know why I have it. There is my um, non-white authors, and I'm currently on ten percent. I should try and lift it up a bit. Um, and then the years published, I can see if I'm just reading new releases, well, new releases, no new releases, um, but very modern books, or whether I am wandering around the field a bit. Um, author gender, females are down a bit, thanks to Brandon Sanderson and CJ Sanderson, and all those other sibilant letters that like to make one list for lot. Uh, I'm not overly worried about this one at this point because I'm still trying to sort out or we'll get through my original TBR part. Um, age group, I've read some YA. I think I put down some of the school books for that. The number of books that I read per month, it's nice to see it in a chart form. Pages read per month. Um, star ratings, as I said, I do give star ratings. Uh, my TBR pal read per month. My TBR progress. Uh, I just need the information where that one comes from. I will put it back in later. Um, the amount of books that I bought, February was a very bad month. But I've been very good of late, so that's awesome. Um, um, books that I've received, my January TBR, this is my, um, my old TBR. So I am on target so far for knocking this one down, which is great. The different genres that I've been getting, and this is um, my reading challenge goal, to read 100. It's, it's just an idea, really. To be totally honest, I'd love to outdo my best, which is 133 in a year. But we will see what happens. Uh, my TBR progress, the more I read, the more this should go down, which is why I said that I, I keep tabs of whether I've read it or whether it's a reread. The fact that it's a reread doesn't pull this down. Um, the faster I read, the lower this should go. The more I buy, the higher this goes. We'll take a, um, this was last year's one. And as you can see, it looks more like a ribbon in a windstorm. Um, but then there was the school feeding fund book sale in September where um, they had 
every book is fiber in the book. Whether it was a hardbound copy of Game of Thrones, which I managed to contain myself, I didn't rugby tackle that very weedy woman to get. I'm sure I would have won. But anyway, and then, yeah, this is what happens when you work in a bookshop. So, <laughs> that poor chart, it didn't stand a chance. But, yeah, my, my TBR progress and things like that. So, I'm um, going back to my 2018 and then series versus standalone. I was quite surprised to see that they are neck on neck. And at least this one tells me that I'm reading as fast as I'm buying, which is good. It is much improved since previous ones because the 2017 one wasn't even bad. <laughs> I've had years where it really went uphill. Um, yeah, so I keep, I, I like my charts. These are just the categories that I use, um, keeping all of this in check. And there is my TBR list at the beginning of January. Um, all the books that I need to read, the ones in blue are the ones that I've read. This one is the one that I'm currently reading, so I can find it nice and easy. And then this is the old one from before. And it's it's getting down nicely. It, there's only 52 there, which is much more manageable than it was. So question number three says, do you give star ratings to books? And the obvious answer is yes, I do. Now, you, me, and everybody else who actually reads I said a star rating means very little, especially if you're looking at um, the very, very important statistic of did I like it? Because did I like it doesn't necessarily tell you whether it was a good book or not. It doesn't tell you if it was informative. It doesn't show much. I mean, there are books out there that I think have horrified me, but were important to read. And I'm glad that I've read them. So a star rating, I admit, means nothing. But there is this thing called the end of year thing. What are your favorite books? Do you know how much faster it is to scroll through something and find all the fives than it is to sit down and reread all your reviews? <laughs> um, I find that it just works fast for things like that. It also gives me an over overall view of the years to whether I've been mostly enjoying it or mostly not. Do you review books? Well, not really. I mean, I don't get paid for it. That would be a nice job if they paid nicely. Um, I review books on Goodreads. It's not a professional review. It is my opinion and it's basically <laughs> for anybody who wants to see what I thought of it. Um, I mean, I don't have a fancy name or um, I'm in a position where anybody who doesn't know me is going to be wanting to know what my opinion on something was. Um, in the past I used to have a blog. So you can see here that once upon a time I had a blog. I stopped working on it quite some time ago. I found that it took way too much energy. I'm a lot fussier in what I write than what I waffle on about on YouTube. Um, and what was holding, well, doing the work of six to eight people, I just didn't have the mental energy to continue this to the level that I wanted and so I was constantly being disappointed with the writing that I put in and I was constantly being um, disappointed because I was falling behind but um, if you take a look here you can see that I've had it going since 2014 and I, I initially was quite proud of it I just as I said started to run out of time um, the other thing that was rather disconcerting is that you can see after running it for four years, I mean, this post has had 16 views. It really did not um, warrant as much effort as I put in. And the number of comments that I had were few and far between. And those that I did get generally were from readathons um, that I was doing with people. So it, it just became... A bit of a pain in um, I have considered perhaps picking it up again but we'll see how things go I've got a different job now so life is a little easier than it used to be where do you put your finished books well back on the shelf where else would I put it um, where it belongs in alphabetical order so question number six asks how do I pick my next book and 
I, I wish I could tell you that there was some logical formula involved, but basically I use my gut. Um, we all know that our brains reside in our stomachs after all. So I, I, I rely on my gut. Sometimes I manipulate my gut by going through my different TBR piles, seeing whether there's anything there that's jumping off the page and appealing to my gut. Um, or else I go through my main library where I have a TBR section which I program through the developer tab to automatically regenerate as I add new books onto my list, etc. And with this one, as you can see, I've got everything over 500 pages highlighted. This is for the Tome Topple Readathon so that it, they stand out a little bit more so that I can find them a bit faster. And um, yeah, that is pretty much my whopping process on how I pick another book to read. As I said, nothing logical or related to the gut and what I feel like. Oh, and sometimes I obviously just stand and stare at my shelves and wait for something to jump out at me. Not literally, that would be scary. Do you have any rituals when you have finished a book? Well, yes. I get quite a kick out of adding the finish date in. I then go and look at my chart and see whether some things have dropped, other things have risen. Um, and I have knock it off in my library catalogs as well. So question number eight is, who do you tag? And I have five candidates for this one. The first one is Candice at Beacon Hill Books. Because I know Candice and I have one thing in common. At least. Then I would like to tag Cheryl at CR Flames Fan. Because I'd be curious to know if you keep a record of what you're reading. Peg at Reading and Knitting on the Porch. Because... This is definitely knitting weather down here. I've just finished, finished crocheting this, so you are on my mind. Um, Brian at Brian's Bookshelves. I'm pretty sure Brian would have lists. I'm sure Brian's got lists. I don't know why. He looks like a list kind of guy. And Rasmika at Rasmika Likes Books, because I'd be curious. And I haven't tagged her in ages. So that was my The Finish the Book tag. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you don't think I'm too crazy. <laughs> Bye for now. P.S. I should have said this much earlier, I suppose. Originally, when I started my book stat reading sheet, I took one that Brock at Let's Read created. Fantastic channel. Really miss him. Wish he would come back. Um, he made a great one, and although I'm pretty good at Excel, etc., on my own, why recreate the wheel if there is a wheel available? And although I know that I have made a lot of changes and adaptions according to what I like and what I want in my reading stats, I can still see particularly in these pages here um, the foundation of his. So thanks out there to Brock at Let's Read. He's been adding to my, my quirks, we'll put it down as quirks, for quite some time and I have been enjoying the results. So yeah, bye for now.